Hi guys, we're here in Long Beach, California, right by the oldest modern sports bar in the world, Legends. What are we doing today? A cannibal run from Long Beach to Las Vegas. Why? Two years ago, I bought this car in Wisconsin at Road America, Elkhart Lake. We drove the car 2,000 miles all the way from Elkhart Lake to Long Beach, California. Had the time of my life. So what about if we did it again? And that's the idea. We're leaving from here, Long Beach to Las Vegas. So let's do it again. Cannibal run to Las Vegas, 280 miles. Ready, go. Wow, fantastic day so far. We're almost halfway. We're here in Barstow, California, hub of all trains. For many years, this was the place where the entire economy of California, Southern California rather, used to come through. Now, we have the museum of all trains right next to us, and we're on Route 66. And we also are fortunately enough to have the Route 66 Barstow Museum right next door that we're gonna go visit. By the way, how's the little baby behaving? Fantastic. We love the PDK, but honestly, the G50 five gear is being just exactly what the doctor ordered. I'm having a blast. Hi guys, a little pit stop on our way to Vegas, our cannibal run, and we got the alien jerky, uh, things Americans make me eat. Uh, it's out of this world, maybe that's why they call it alien. On the background, you can see the largest thermometer in the planet. It's only 108 degrees, yes. We're at the verge of the hottest place on Earth, Death Valley. You turn a right at Mad Greek, and there you go. But no, we're gonna go to Vegas, so we're gonna load up with food and jerky, and enjoy the trip. So uh, we finally made it to Vegas. We're in the Vegas area, Red Rock National Park. Uh, so I'm gonna tell you what we did. We went through Apple Valley, California, Victorville, California, Barstow, California, Yermo, California, finally Baker, where we had some fun, a lot of fun, 
and uh, and we finally made it to Vegas uh, with no problems whatsoever, no cops, nothing. Everything went so smooth. And actually, we behaved. We never went over 175 miles an hour. Anyway, so um, what about? Well, first of all, you know, we're here in National Park. It's a national park, Red Rock, and it's only 20 minutes from the boulevard. Vegas has a lot more to offer than just the boulevard. Red Rock is beautiful. Never mind Mount Charleston, about 40 minutes from the boulevard. You can go skiing. If you're an intermediate skier, you'll be okay. If you're better than that, maybe you're not gonna like it. Uh, but anyway, what we're gonna talk about now is the car. Here it is. It behaved incredible. So uh, what is this? What is this? What is this for? Nowadays, this is the kind of car that you would use for vintage. Uh, it already had done his thing back in the day as being a 993 1998. Uh, this race car is 100% full-fledged race car, so it really has not much to do. So compared to a street 993, nothing even close. I mean, everything. The car is only 2,100 pounds to, for starters, and uh, the other car was over 3,000 pounds. And never mind, we have changed the coilovers. If you come along, I can start showing you all the features on this unbelievable race car. For starters. We have BBS wheels. Can't go wrong with BBS. They're 18, size 18. And we have Pirelli's P0. Now, are there stickier tires that we can go maybe a little faster? Yes. Hoosiers, for example. And, uh, but the problem is that it will last us a weekend and it's $1,700. So we had Pirelli P0s. These tires last you so many races. And it's Pirelli. Can't beat the brand. So, what kind of engine do I have here? The 993 had a 3.6 engine. That is what we have. So we do have a 3.6 engine, like the original 993, but it's a race engine. So instead of 300 horsepower, we're getting 400 horsepower. Now, gas tank, there's no gas tank on this thing. What you have is a fuel cell. What is a fuel cell? It's kind of like a big box that goes in the front about 15 gallons, that's what you can carry on, on the box. Uh, one of the beauty things about being able to put the fuel cell is that when you have to fill the gas tank, just keep in mind that the engine is in the back, it's behind the rear axle. So you had gas, engine, everything way on the back. The car would oversteer easily. Now we have the fuel cell on the front. So now we have the fuel cell on the front. What does that mean? Now we have a lot more balance because now we have in the front. And the overseer is not gonna be that bad with this baby right here. If you look at it, there's not one wing. There's actually two wings. The old turbo wing and the additional wing. Now, how do they behave? My, what has been my experience now that we have gone a little under 175 miles an hour, a lot under, I guess. It behaves fantastically because it really gives a lot of drag to the car. Therefore, the handling is exactly what we need on a car that has a lot of weight on the back. So the faster you go, the more drag, it pushes the back end, and there you go. The tires get warmer, they stick better. It's a win-win situation. Again, we have now the weight on the front. Now, how do you make a car that is over 3,000 pounds weigh 2,000 pounds? Okay, give you an example. Okay, there's many things you can do. And we look at every single angle to try to gain an advantage in lowering the weight on the car. Lexum, that's the material, so it's not glass. Glass weighs a lot. Same thing, Lexum, and very, very thin. If you go up front, you're gonna see that even a little detail, like the badge, there's no badge, we put a sticker. <laughs> because the, the badge weighs. But anyway, you go, you think it's funny, but you know what, when you start adding things up, you see the dashboard. The dashboard is all carbon fiber, it looks kinda like what the car brings, but it's 100% carbon fiber and there's nothing in it. We have gutted everything to the point that once you see the roof, we have actually destroyed the structure of the car by taking the roof out and put a composite shell, which is riveted. 
The entire car is composite, so we're saving hundreds of pounds just with the body. Another thing, on this particular vehicle, we had put a wide body, which is more aerodynamic, so it will penetrate better as you pick up speeds. And to make up for the crime that we committed by destroying the roof and so forth, we put a A1 cage. The cage is FIA approved, FIA, so you can race all over the world with this particular cage. And in this particular case, also is SCCA approved, the specifications. And the uh, reason we did that because that's one of the because that's one of the leagues that we would like to race. We've been racing there for a while. The seat, there's only one seat. And it's a Sparco, it's an Evo. Belts, of course, no belts. The huge thing about this car that I love, uh, this is the last generation of the air-cooled Porsches. Through here, both windows, there are the intakes that cool the engine. When I bought this vehicle, I was shocked how cold the car runs. So one of the fantastic features when I bought this car and drove it at speed are these little intakes. Just keep in mind that this is the last generation of the air-cooled Porsches. So through the windows here on both sides, the air goes in and it cools the engine. Now, a huge worry for every person that drives and races cars. And now one of the biggest worries for people that race cars is usually the temperature. Uh, you run anywhere from 200 to 210, 220, and then you start worrying. It's like, oh my God, it's overheating. So when I got this car in Wisconsin, Road America, and I was at the track, going fast, going around, I'm looking at the temperature, and it was like 140 at the bottom. So I said, ah, they're selling me a car with a broken gauge. What a surprise. It was the right temperature. This intakes work miracles. The car runs maybe 180. All this year is worrying about cars going 200 temperature and up. Worst scenario, I'm running with 180, 185. So we're very happy about that. One of the biggest worries for people that race cars is the temperature. Yeah, when you're running 200, 210, 220, then you start to worry. Yeah, you start running over 200, 210, 220, then you start to worry. It's a constant thing, you're always looking at the temperature, see if it's doing well. Now, this intakes do miracles. We're reminding you that this is the last generation of the air-cooled Porsches. The air goes through here, it cools the engine down. You're doing, I don't know, 140, 150, 160 miles over a period of time, and it stays at 140. Usually, if I'm getting 200 on any other race car, I'm happy. At the hottest, you're doing 185, 185 degrees. Unbelievable. So what does a fuel cell look like? Let me show you. Basically a box. This red thing right here, 15 gallons, like a gas tank. You open it, pour the gas in there. If things go wrong and there's a fire, fire suppression system. Hopefully, it'll put it off. The famous dry sump is right here. The engine that's on the back does not have an oil pan. So we keep the oil right in here and it's pumped through here all the way to the rear of the engine, keeping the engine lubricated at all times. So when you get some G-forces, if you're turning one way or the other or you're on a banking, the oil goes one way. Usually that's what happens on a normal car. On this car, the pumps are throwing oil at all times and the engine is lubricated. So we don't have to worry about oil starvation. The battery, very small, just to get it started. So you try to find the smallest battery because again, we're trying to save weight. Very simple to open the engine compartment. There's basically two latches. It's one, the other one. And this is your 3.6 tricked out Porsche 993 engine with one Italian feature, the air filter. To close it is very simple. 
one lets through. The second one through. And then, you know, the one feature that makes this race car a winner, and we have to have it, is the double wing. Just keep in mind, everything, the weight is in the back. We need the rear end stuck on the street. The body, there's a composite white body that has some interesting features, like for example, there's some intakes right here. I see my hands going in there. Reason being is they pull off our tires. Sometimes they get too hot. They're melting on us. As you can see, this is quite pronounced. It makes the car flow much better as we penetrate, as we're going at speed. Another feature that is a must and no serious organization is gonna let you run without it is the kill switch. We have a little headman here that shows when it's on and checker flag when we turn it off. At the same time, there is a big sticker off why? Why do we put that? Because the flaggers, when they come to assist the driver, need to know where is it. So the big sticker is going to help you. Also, the red car is going to help them. They can shut the engine off and we can prevent maybe a fire or some other problems. And of course, we have the traditional Porsche grill. We have the oil pressure on this side and the oil temperature, the one so important we're always looking at, on the other end. And then we have very important switches. We have a transmission pump switch and an oil fan switch. That means that the transmission would get cooler as we're racing the car if we have the switch on. Same thing with the oil. Huge, huge items. The starting button is right here. Ignition button is the red one to the right of the steering wheel. One seat. And this is the all important cage that actually restructures the car so it wouldn't be like a piece of pudding. As you can see, the roof is riveted. Another important item is right behind the seat is the seat brace. Without a seat brace, you, a lot of people race without a seat brace. It's so dangerous. By having this aluminum seat brace, the seat doesn't even move. So if you're in a bad accident, you're fine. So this is a Porsche 993 race car. How close is it from the street 993? Uh, not even close. Okay folks, we blew through Vegas and had a blast. How could we not? So anyway, remember to come to the strip, plenty of fun. And if you liked our video, please subscribe, give us a comment, give us a like, and above all, remember, we love the car you're with. We'll see you soon. Oh, my God.